Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. I want to go over the quotient remainder theorem, which basically says uh, every integer can be written as a sum and product of other integers in the form n equal d times q plus r, where d is my denominator, q is my quotient, and r is my remainder, where r is a number between 0 and d. So for example, if I took a number like, let's say, 13, and I said I want the denominator to be 4, that means we could write 13 as 4 times 3 plus 1, 4 being the denominator, 1 being the remainder. So the formal notation we generally would say here is that n div d equals q, and n mod d equals r r being the remainder, mod being the more important of the two. That's the one we're going to use in general. These will form what we call equivalence classes. And we say in general, two numbers, m and n, are equivalent. The three bars in this case mean equivalent. Mod d for any number d. So that would be kind of like saying we're going to count by the same amount to get to the next number. This statement is also equivalent to d divides the difference of m and n. Pause. All right, let's look at an example here. I want to consider all rational numbers with a denominator of 2. Well, if my numerator is even versus my numerator is odd, we'll determine if I have a remainder or not. So we're going to end up with exactly two equivalence classes. So we'd say two numbers are equivalent mod 2 if they have the same remainder, which means that basically m and n are either both even or they're both odd. So one equivalence class will look like this. 1 is equivalent to 3, 5, and so on, or basically all the odd numbers. 0, 2, 4, and so on, all the even numbers. So we have exactly two equivalence classes. We usually like to describe the equivalence class as the smallest non-negative integer. So we would call this class 0 and this class 1. Okay. Now we'll do another simple example. Let's consider all rational numbers with a denominator of 6. Now we have several more possibilities because of all the different types of remainders. We could have remainder 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. This leads to exactly six equivalence classes. And so we'll write it like this. The equivalence class for 0 will include 0, 6, 12, and so on. Basically, I'm counting by 6s. The equivalence class for 1, 1, 7, 13, and so on. So if we go all the way down the line, clearly we're going to have six different classes because six different forms of remainders. So the question is, if I said 2 is equivalent to 8, that's fine. What about negative 4? Would that also work? Well, first of all, notice that the difference remains 6. So because the difference remains a multiple of 6, negative 4 would also be in that equivalence class. Okay? 